we are live. So, welcome to Hawkeye, Episode 5, Ronin Thoughts. So, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. Also, some comic books. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. Brief off-topic, Stephen Colbert just put out a video where he and the original cast of the Lord of the Rings trilogy rap about how it's the best trilogy. If that sounds at all appealing to you, make sure to watch it. It is incredible. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such. Lost my train of thought. Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes, especially in videos made by New Rockstar Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, IGN Heavy Spoilers, Magic Mackie, Emergency Awesome, Real James, Jesse Gender, Nando V Movies. I'm not saying all of them did anything on this specific video or even show, just that they're good for Disney Plus shows that tie into the MCU. So, if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. No matter how hard I look for flaws, and I do look hard, I cannot rate any of them lower than 7 out of 10, and many of them are perfect 10 out of 10. Although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2, and I'm definitely not claiming that a single one of them is 100% absolutely flawless, I'm saying that their strengths so greatly outweigh their weaknesses that they deserve such high ratings. And all of every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows, 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, and the episodes of this that have aired, including this episode. I've read all issues of Matt Frat, Matt Fraction, and David Ahas Hawkeye. Love it. Now, there are still a few issues with the pacing in this episode. Now, parts of the episode are dark, good acting, great character moments for all of the characters. Everyone behaves in character, and this episode also explores grief, which Nando V Movies pointed out is the main theme for Phase 4 of the MCU, and yeah, the, you know, the Disney Plus MCU shows continue to have some problems handling their major villain characters. You know, by the end of this episode, we finally know who the main... Uh, we finally have concrete confirmation of what literally everyone knew was going to turn out to be the main villain of this show. Which, you know, that's... Yeah, that's very late into the show, too. Yeah. Very cool to see Elena working with another Black Widow, and... You know, she's there to deprogram another Widow, but it turns out she was either already deprogrammed or she was never programmed, so, something like that. And the three talk about all the deprogramming they've done. You can go live your sex in the city fantasy in New York. In this scenario, who is the one to die by Peloton? I, ca I can't... I just gotta put it out there. That lane that line was ADR. Hypothetically, they could have chosen to remove that line. I, I'm not saying that there's some kind of sinister I just I can't help but wonder why they didn't remove that line. Because this episode did hit Disney Plus after the Pel Death by Peloton bit that like you know, a bunch of people, you know, like like the Peloton, I want to say it was, the Peloton stocks, you know, just really uh, crashed. So, yeah, or dove. And we see Yelena is snapped and comes back. This is the first time we see exactly what it looks like for someone who is snapped and then returns. The other time we saw someone as they're snapped or as they're coming back or before they were, or after they returned. I need to find Natasha. Can you help me find Natasha? I need to tell her that I'm okay. I really appreciate that we get to see this. We already understood why she wanted revenge, but it's still a real gut punch of a scene. And Kate goes back to Eleanor, who helps tend to Kate's wounds. 
and Kate tells Eleanor what they found out about Jack, and Kazi helps tend to the wounds of Maya, who opens up the tiniest bit of, to him when they, <laughs> and and then they talk about it. Like, I I really appreciate that. Just yeah, she's. I, I forget exactly what it was he said, but he was like some you're you're like a closed book. You you never tell me anything. And she's like, okay, fine. Here's one thing. There, I open up to you. Happy. And Yelena, I, I quite like I, I understand some some people might really hate that Yelena in this episode is back to her persona from the Blackwood of Solo movie. I will say I did really love seeing her super intense. It, she she had almost no screen time. It was mostly, you know, where we actually knew it was her. The the you know some some have said that oh it was probably her stunt double maybe yeah but th you know the moment that the mask comes off she doesn't I mean is it thirty seconds it might be less than thirty seconds where we actually see her face. And in that, she just, yeah, that's that's the face of someone who's going to murder you. That is, you know, it's very, very different. I can understand people who might have wanted her to continue to stay in Terminator mode for this episode. But I, I do, you know, like, I forget exactly, like, she makes a noise or something. And Kate, you know, she, she, was, she was simply following the directions of quite a few songs who say, make some noise. You know, so Kate hears that, turns and throws. You know, it's it's not that she thinks this is like the world's best weapon. It's just you know, this is something that will at least give her. You know, it it should provide like just a few seconds for her to get a better weapon in her hands, and. Yelena just catches it, and, and I like the, you know, clearly it literally would have hit her right in the face if Yelena hadn't caught it. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not the best weapon in the world, but it's, the, it's, it's gonna mess you up, you know, but she just, and she doesn't like duck, she just catches it, hi, and it's just, and she's like talking about food, it's almost kind of friendly, and you know, she goes to take the fork in the kitchen, not to be confused with the fork in the road. I personally appreciate that she's very similar to the way she was characterized in the Black Widow Solo movie, and and Kate realize, realizes Yelena really would have just killed her already before and before and instead of the conversation. I love hot sauce. I always keep some in my bag. And Yelena wants to talk about American Christmas with Kate, and she's eaten reindeer. She just went into a restaurant, found out it was on menu, and went, Cool, I want to eat Bambi! Good thinking of Clint to go to Grill's place. His own place is probably compromised. And Yelena does, uh, you know, finally come out and says she wants to kill Clint. And Kate doesn't believe Yelena that, she, that he's the one responsible for Natasha's death. Kate Bishop, do not get in my way again. Yelena really didn't need to leave through the window using repelling rope, but let's be honest, if any one of us could do that every time we left, you know, a building or even just a room, we definitely would do it every single time we left a building or a room. I promise you, you're mistaken. I haven't worked a day in my life. And... You know, so, yeah, Eleanor called the cops, and he's been arrested. And Clint goes to the memorial, talks to Natasha like one would at a tombstone, expresses survivor's guilt. I'm so sorry for what I'm about to do. And Kate looks at all the awards in her room, the first bow she ever got, decides it's not over, and leaves messages on Clint's answering machine. I love that she actually, she left so many messages that eventually she got the message, the mailbox is full and cannot accept any more messages at this time. And in one of them, she literally, like, she, she has self-awareness, some. 
do you think I want to be doing this? Do you think I like sounding like a crazy person leaving a bunch of messages on your machine? <laughs> I, I think if you're if you're at the point when you're doing something while saying you understand why you shouldn't be doing it, maybe just don't do it in the first place. I I I can't get enough of Kate Bishop. And Clint sent a message by Arrow to meet Maya. And calls Laura. They talk about finishing this. You know, and Maya's there. I, like, apparently, like, the message said, come alone. I, I forget, but it was mentioned by at least one of my fellow YouTubers. And she didn't come alone. She, You know, she's got Kazi covering her as a sniper and a bunch of tracks with Mafia and... You know, Clinton knocks him out and then goes all Batman on the tracksuit mafia. Now, I I saw at least one of the one of my fellow YouTubers said, you know, I don't know why Clint apologized to Natasha for what he's about to do. He didn't kill anyone. I think that is, I I believe that's true. I don't. I'm I'm pretty sure he didn't kill anyone there, but it's still like I mean. You, you might as well say, oh, he only had one drink, so what if he's a recovering alcoholic? No, no, no. The moment you go back there at all, that's, you know, he... he. I, I don't think we saw... Yeah, we haven't seen it exactly, but I figure when... Like, probably... Probably once he got his family back, post-blip, he probably made a pledge... At that memorial, or possibly at her actual grave that we saw in the Black Widow solo movie post credit scene, or mid credits, I forget which of them, he probably pledged, I will never become the Ronin again, not for any reason, no matter what, not even a little bit. And yeah, he didn't kill anyone, but he did, like, she pulled him back from the edge and gave her life, you know, in, in part to save half of all living things but also in part to save him he was going to sacrifice himself so and Ronan Ronan gets Maya to empty her clip without hitting anything but she discharges it from the gun as an attack quite like when people do that very cool fight between Ronan and Maya and she's waited for quite some time for this so if you are anyone comes after me or my family, it would be the last thing you do. You have my word. That might also be the thing that he was apolo you know, apologizing to not Natasha for. You and I are the same. We're weapons. Your boss wanted your father dead. Like in the comic. And Kate saves Clint again. And Maya asks Kazi why he wasn't at the meeting, realizing Clint is right. Kazi called Clint, told him when and where. And Clint already knew that Natasha had a sister named Yelena. So they did talk about that, even though, you know, she didn't contact her in those years. And Yelena's following Eleanor. We get the reveal that she's working for Eleanor. We don't really know why she's following her. I guess maybe Kate convinced her that there's something wrong about this whole thing. He's the guy I've been worrying about the whole time. The one the fandom has been hoping for. Kingpin. Until they came right out and showed the image of Kingpin, I honestly didn't think that we would get to see him before the finale. And the end credits play to a... the song about the Grinch. Great. I, I forget exactly who it was that said, uh, might have been Sean Chandler talks about movies. I should add him to the list of people who make great content about this. He pointed out that there's really great chemistry between, I hope I got that, no disrespect if I didn't, I, you know, I have a bad memory, but I think it might have been him, but yeah. Out, you know, there's great chemistry between Kate and Yelena, and they're probably go th go th both going, there it is, both going to become Young Avengers, so it's really good for there to be good chemistry. And 
As he's being arrested, Jack jokes that he's not familiar with any Sloane other than this one woman he was with, which I guess means that he has not watched Alias or Star Trek Deep Space Nine, or DS9 for the initiated. And that's not something that gets you arrested, but it damn well should be. And like with other Disney Plus Marvel shows, one of the times of the MCU, like WandaVision, Despite the fact that everyone online guessed the twist of who the villain really was, they didn't try to course correct to surprise people. I really appreciate that in each case. It's true that we weren't surprised, but we were still satisfied. Like, if you can find a person that's like, okay, so we're getting more of Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin, who then goes on to say, but I mean, we kind of guessed that, so I'm really not that excited. No, that's just, there's no one like that out there. That's just not a thing. You might be, you might not be as, like, you're not, it, did, it didn't, like, it's not an earthquake, but it's still like, okay, that's, that's still really, really cool. I am at this point constitutionally incapable of hearing a fictional character say that they want to see the Statue of Liberty without Magneto's monologue about it playing in my head. I, tr I tried to find a way to work it, work it in here, but I couldn't quite, so I'm just going to go with that. New Rockstars compares Elena and Kate talking to the opening of Inglorious Bastards. Very true. And... I forget exactly. I think this might... Also, B. Sean Chandler talks about movies, but pointed out that Yelena points out, you know, Clint Barton, okay, he's an Avenger, but he's still done several things. And I forget if it was that same YouTuber pointed out that, you know, really most of the Avengers have done something really bad. And I know what you're thinking, Steve Rogers has done something really bad. The, the argument they made was he did lie to Tony about who killed his parents. That's, is you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's still, like, he, sh he should have come out and said it. But, yeah, the, the, the YouTube pointed out, you know, she's done terrible things, so she's, it doesn't make that much sense for it to be her who says it, and she's quirky. Kate Bishop is usually the only quirky character in the room in the, on the show. Now, a couple of things about Spider-Man No Way Home. The following, the, this first thing, I've also added this to, uh, as soon as, the, well, yeah, by the time this video is on, if you're watching this video right now, that means I have added it to the description box, unless I forgot. Yeah. With it in the description box and with it being said in this video, now there's, it's in two places, bigger chance of people finding out. Thinking more about it, I'm changing my rating for Spider-Man No Way Home from an 8 to a 10. Again, not saying it's, not saying everything about it is perfect, but the strengths so greatly outweigh the negatives. Now, the following is going to contain spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home, and that movie did come out after this aired, so... Spoilers until you see me lower my index finger. So, mutants skip ahead. Honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to talk more about Hawkeye in this video. So, you can just shut off the video if you want. So, the entire third act of the movie, the actions by the good guys, all of them, are completely driven by the idea that these three spiders man will indeed be able to save these five villains. I should have thought about the fact that I'm going to need that finger. There we go. Now, Spider-Man in the comics does often try to save his villains, since many of them are actually victims. And we've seen all three of these Spider-Men, Spider-Mans, try to do... I try to make it grammatically incorrect every time I do a plural of Spider-Man. Anyway, all three of these Spider-Men try to do that in at least one of each of their movies. But very often the movie will still end with the villain dead, though it tends to be that Peter just wasn't able to save them from themselves, or, you know, as with Norman Osborn's Green Goblin, or they choose to sacrifice themselves to redeem themselves. You know, that covers both Doc Ock and the Harry... The first Harry Goblin, yeah. 
but in this movie they do succeed. They save I'm I'm almost certain they save all five of these people. They they you know Tom Holland was about to beat Green Goblin to death, but you know they stop yeah, they stopped him and they they deprogram him and I really like that afterwards he's not like it wasn't my fault. He's like what did I do? I, anyway, I can't help but wonder if the writers wanted to fix this aspect of these movies. If they had had been, or at least grew to be, unhappy that the villains were not saved by Spider-Man. And so they wrote this third act to address that. So, for the, the post credit scene, we see Strange Supreme. Considering that he won the duel against the regular... You know, against Doctor Strange in the What If episode, the first What If episode he appeared in, not either of the other ones. I'm super excited for a rematch. I'll grant that that was a less experienced Doctor Strange than the one we know in the movie. You know, yeah. And we don't know if Strange Supreme has learned any new magic or has become more powerful. I'm I'm really excited to see wins. So, no more spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home. That is absolutely everything I had to say about the episode. I am so psyched to see the last episode. I cannot wait. It's, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a whole thing. And I th think I read that Moon Knight is next. Just dream come true, dream come true. Can't wait for that to, to I'm so glad that he's getting a Disney Plus show because how do you do Moon Knight justice in a movie? Like you, if if he shows up in a movie later, which is probably sure, but you gotta get like his his origin story and like the way the character works. You gotta you need more than even two and a half hours or three hours of Endgame. Or certain for maybe you could do it in three hours, but it wouldn't fit the the structure of a of a movie for three hours. Anyway, that is absolutely everything that I had to say. So, hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.